women who get together with other women are healthier, happier, and stronger. Now we can make some figure eights with our hips. Figure eight, figure eight, figure eight, figure eight. By the time I met Mickey, I had already contemplated suicide and I was developing a plan. That's how dark my life had gotten. Because I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. Welcome to Prime Time for Women, the show for and about women in their prime, and the show where we celebrate the stories of amazing women. In his masterclass writing workshop, American novelist, television producer, and screenwriter R.L. Stein says, a good story starts with knowing the ending. The rest of the book, according to Stein, builds the story's tension, depicts the ups and downs of the plot, explains the in and out of the settings, and explores the character's flaws and assets. Today, on Prime Time for Women, we're going to celebrate a story for which we absolutely know the ending, the story of the 19th Amendment. The 19th Amendment, which gave American women the right to vote became law exactly 100 years ago on August 18, 1920, when ten the state of Tennessee became the 36th state to ratify the amendment. We know the ending, but today we will recall and honor and celebrate the many women who labored and sacrificed to make the 19th Amendment a reality. These trailblazers laid the groundwork for generation of feminists who have to this very day <coughs> followed in their footsteps. It's a pleasure to welcome Kathy Cutler to today's show. She will shed light on some of the amazing historical figures who by working to give women a voice, changed the course of our country. Kathy herself, inspired by these leaders, has been polit politically engaged on behalf of women's rights most of her life. She served as a delegate at two Democratic National Conventions and as the co-chair of the Columbus Area Women's Political Caucus as well as campaign office director for Obama and Clinton in Pennsylvania. Welcome, Kathy. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. So it's an important time. It is. It's an important topic, too. So I'm so glad you're here to talk to us about it. Uh, so the passing of the 19th Amendment was a big deal. Sometimes we take it for granted. Can you remind us what it was like before women got the right to vote? Well, uh, before the amendment, and actually somewhat until today, um, Women had a, a secondary role in society. They were defined primarily by uh, being a housewife and a mother. There okay. uh, other opportunities out in society to do professional work were not there for them. Uh, they did not have property rights, especially if they were married. Um, if they got married, the husband got the property, even if they had it coming into the marriage. Uh, they could, if they earned money, it was the husband's money. Uh, if there was a divorce, which the woman couldn't ask for it, the man had to ask for a divorce. But if that happened, many times they lost their children uh, to the husband if he wanted them. So it was not a good time. It wasn't women. equitable, right? No. <laughs> so we have uh, some really interesting characters. Susan, Anthony, uh, Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth uh, Stanton are frequently credited as some of the most influential feminists. Um, but they had very different ways of uh, advocating for women's rights. Can you talk a little bit about their partnership? Uh, yeah, they're considered the leaders of the women's uh, uh, movement. The suffrage movement, yeah. The suffrage movement to pass the 19th Amendment. Uh, and in 1840, they banded together and they organized for a national campaign to get the amendment passed so women could vote. But they were very different. Uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton was married and had seven children. Uh, and so she kind of had to stay a little close to home. She had other things going on. But she became the strategist. She was very committed to the cause, but she became the strategist and the speechwriter for yeah, the she, movement. She was sort of like the brains of the... Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, um, uh, Susan B. Anthony uh, was single. And so she, she was able to roam a little bit freer. And uh, she became kind of the Energizer Bunny of right. the movement. Uh, she was out everywhere. She was the public face of the movement. She was the public face, and she was out everywhere doing the work of that. Uh, she was brave. She was a firebrand. Uh, one example of that is that in 1972, she said, I'm not waiting any 1972. longer. 1972. Oh, 18. Yeah, yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100 years here and there, what the heck. Uh, but in 1872, right. uh, she uh, went to the polls to vote. 
And the poll workers were not, you know, they weren't very trained at that point, and they let her in, and they let her vote. She knew it was illegal. It was illegal. And she knew she'd probably go to jail. And she was picked up and went before a judge. And uh, the judge said, um, do you have anything to say for yourself, Miss Anthony? You know, you've broken the law here. And she said, I have a lot to say. And then she proceeded to tell the judge all the injustices against women in society and until the judge kind of shut her up. And then she, um, they didn't put her in jail because they knew that would energize the movement. So she was charged $100 fine and she refused to pay it and they never came back to her. Well, just as a caveat, I saw on August 18th of this year, President Trump forgave oh, her. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, you know what? We have so many more stories to cover. Uh, it's so exciting, such a great topic. Yep. Uh, we're going to take a quick little break and we'll come back to uh, hear some more stories about the progression of the 19th Amendment. We'll be right back after this commercial break. 14 years ago, he diagnosed her with cystic fibrosis. Our doctors read charts and test results. Knowing my family history, she screened me early for colon cancer. They read medical journals and digital images. But the most important thing they read... He put down the laptop, he looked me in the eye, and listened. Are their patients. Meritus Medical Group. Home to your extraordinary doctor. The DVR. It's changed the way we watch TV. And now, Antietam Broadband takes you to the next level with TiVo. Find your favorites on cable or streaming video faster with voice-activated integrated search. Record up to six channels at once and watch from any TV in your home. TiVo from Antietam Broadband. It will change your life. Call today or visit AntietamBroadband.com to learn more. We're talking with Kathy Cutler, who is helping us celebrate the 100th anniversary of the passing of the 19th Amendment. So Kathy, uh, I know as the, this was uh, developing historically, there was a, a historical event that occurred in 1948 in Seneca Falls, New York. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the, uh, the Women's Conference in 1848 uh, is considered to be really the first important women's conference uh, in the United States. Um, that began to develop a campaign for the women's right to vote. There were approximately 300 people who went. Uh, it was big for that time frame, uh, black and white, male and female. Uh, one of the major um, uh, speakers there was a, a black freed slave named Frederick Douglass, very famous yeah. man. <laughs> And uh, he, he advocated for all sorts of rights. He was a very intelligent, urbane man. And his support actually was very important to the movement. It That's brought great. people in. That's great. There was a lot of synergy that, at that time between women's right and abolitionists. Right. And I was wondering if you can uh, talk a little bit about uh, how they connected. Uh, yes, the fight against slavery, the abolitionist movement, and the, the fight for women's right to vote um, they connected because they had similar uh, objectives, uh, human rights, right. and they worked together for a period of time. There was a bifurcation, and I'm, I would like to mention that at the end, but they did work together, and we had some really uh, strong black leaders mm -hmm. in, uh, in the movement. Uh, so during the truth, uh, was, uh, gave a very famous speech in favor of women's right to vote, and it was called Ain't I a Woman? And essentially what she was saying was, I do everything a man does. I've worked in the fields. I've picked cotton. I've done all of this stuff that a man has done, but I'm a woman. But if I can do what a man does, I should have equal rights with the man. It was a very powerful speech, and it, it moved the movement along. But I do want to make one, one point, is that after the Civil War, the blacks uh, movement began to focus on constitutional amendments to end slavery and to give the right to vote to black men. 
And the suffragist movement moved away from the black movement at that point because women were not included in that voting black amendment. Women. And they said, if women are not included with black men, we are not going to support the amendment. It caused a problem between the races in the movement. It okay. was unfortunate. Okay. It was unfortunate. Uh, so uh, we, let's fast forward a little bit. And in 1920, they successfully passed the 19th Amendment. And um, now uh, there's still a lot of work to be done. And uh, th it was proposed that we would pass an Equal Rights Amendment, which would give women the same rights that uh, black men had won to vote. So can you talk about the ERA? Yeah, the, uh, after the passage of the, of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote, very important, but it was very narrow. It was one right. A as I indicated before, they uh, were not equal in terms of property ownership. They were not equal in terms of educational opportunities and so on. And so uh, there was a broader movement in the women's movement then to pass an equal rights amendment, which said essentially that men and women are equal under the law. And so that movement went forward, and um, and there were um, uh, you know a, a number of people that that joined that movement. I would like to give a personal example, if I could, um, uh, because the the Equal Rights Amendment never passed con it never still passed hasn't the passed. states. Yeah, so it's not part of the Constitution. So equal rights under the law for women is not part of the Constitution, and so the fight goes on. And um, I was a delegate to the convention, at, at two conventions. In 1980, we held up as delegates a sign which said 59 cents. And what that meant was that women earned 59 cents for every dollar that a man earned. Well, fast forward 40 years. If we held up that sign today, it would say 80 cents. So the point is that we have made progress, no question, but there are things still to be done here. Okay, thank you for sharing that. So, uh, Kathy, uh, as we look at the many, many women that followed in the footsteps of these early suffragettes, we can look at Betty Fried uh, Friedan and Gloria Steinem, Oprah Winfrey, Hillary Clinton, Shirley Chisholm. I was wondering if any one of these women really resonates with you or if you have a story you wanted to share. Yeah, I have a great story about Shirley Chisholm, but I, I do want to say that all of those women uh, I have made significant contributions, either being activists or just being good role models in their profession, strong, capable women doing good work, you know. But uh, Shirley Chisholm, uh, she was a black woman from uh, Brooklyn. Uh, she was the first black woman elected to the U.S. Congress. She was the first black woman to run for the U.S. presidency in 1972. When she first went to Congress, she was uh, seated on the uh, Agriculture Committee. Now, she is from Brooklyn. She said, this doesn't really relate to who my constituents are. And she felt she was being marginalized as a black female by the men in power there. And so she was angry and she was disturbed about it. But, you know, she, what she did was she developed a strategy and she said that this committee deals with food and it deals with sometimes with food surpluses, extra food that's not sold. And so she developed a program through that committee to feed the poor, which definitely addressed her constituency and the entire country. And so the thing I love about that story is that it, it is a classic example of making lemonade out of lemons and women have had to do that for a long time. That's great. That's such a great story. Well, Kathy, we're almost out of time, but I just was going to ask you in celebration of the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, do you have any advice to pass on to women? Oh, yes. Uh, I, it, it, I mean, it, it is the 100th anniversary and, uh, and it's the right to vote. And women worked for over 70 years and longer to get this amendment passed and they went to jail over it. They were spat on, they were jeered. Uh, they endured hunger campaigns and were force fed in prison. And so I think that the, the least that all of us can do as women is to go out and vote in this election. I mean, it's, the, it's a simple way to make magnificent change in society. Thank you so much for being here and for those incredible words of wisdom. Uh, 
we are celebrating the 100th anniversary, and uh, I'm so grateful for Kath reminding us that it is by voting that we can best express our appreciation for these remarkable individuals who worked so diligently to make sure we had that right. It's important that we take time to look back and see how far we've journeyed, but it's also important to look forward to see how yet we need to, how much we need to do. Mostly though, it's important to remember that it takes a sisterhood to realize these goals. No one woman can do it together. That's as true today as it was 100 years ago. As Michelle Obama said, for all of us, for each woman, for each other, for justice for all, we work together. Stay with us, we'll be right back after this commercial break. 14 years ago, he diagnosed her with cystic fibrosis. Our doctors read charts and test results. Knowing my family history, she screened me early for colon cancer. They read medical journals and digital images. But the most important thing they read. He put down the laptop, he looked me in the eye, and listened. Are their patients. Meritus Medical Group, home to your extraordinary doctor. The DVR, it's changed the way we watch TV. And now, Antietam Broadband takes you to the next level with TiVo. Find your favorites on cable or streaming video faster with voice-activated integrated search. Record up to six channels at once and watch from any TV in your home. TiVo from Antietam Broadband. It will change your life. Call today or visit AntietamBroadband.com to learn more. What a show. Today we had an opportunity to pay tribute to some of the many passionate and determined women who worked to secure the passing of the 19th Amendment. Because of their efforts, today, right here on Prime Time for Women, we are able to celebrate 100 years of women having the right to vote. I can't wait until we also pass the ERA, the amendment guaranteeing women and men equal rights. Despite being presented to Congress 97 years ago, it still hasn't passed. What the heck? Okay, we're getting there. Don't despair. It's going to happen soon. And you know how I know it? Because according to our next guest, Jenna Lamlin, women all over the country are looking to learn and develop dynamic leadership skills to tackle difficult problems. And Jenna should know, as a perpetual student, which is how she describes herself as the personal enrichment and youth program manager at Hagerstown Community College, Jenna and her team will be hosting LeaderCast Women 2020. This national simulcast event will take place at HCC on October 30th and will feature six powerful female presenters who will inspire attendees with their stories, advice, and problem-solving strategies. Welcome, Jenna. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you for having me. Sure. Uh, before we talk about this year's LeaderCast mm -hmm. Women, can you tell us a little bit about the history of this event? Absolutely. So LeaderCast Women, it is a virtual conference that has actually been around since 2017. So this will be the fourth year that it has been held. And it's the third year that we have had it at Hagerstown Community College. Okay. And it's uh, because it's a simulcast event, it does take place live in Atlanta, Georgia, but it's broadcast all around the world. So they all around the world, not all just around the, the world. Oh, yes. I didn't realize that's so yeah. exciting. Yeah, so um, they have it in 13 countries, including South Africa and Australia. That's so um, neat. And we had about 150 people that attended live last year. So we're hoping to have about as many this year, if not more, because it's moved to a virtual format. That's great. And what is this uh, year's, uh, each year uh, there's a different theme. Can mm -hmm. you talk about this year's event, uh, about the theme for this year? Sure, yeah. So I'm actually really excited about this theme. Uh, it's Ripple Effect. And it's really about how we as leaders um, any little decision that you make, whether it's related to budget or workplace culture, um, it, it has a ripple effect. And that ripple effect can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. Um, and really how to make sure that you are intentionally using your role as a leader to um, insight and create positive change and understanding that impact that you have and leveraging um, that impact. Yeah, I love that analogy. I think about dropping a pebble in a little mm -hmm. pond and having those 
ripples go out and from the center you can impact everything going outward. So exactly. I think that's that's really great. Uh, so LeaderCast Women over the course of the day will feature six women. Mm -hmm. uh, who is the guest speaker or the prime um, keynote speaker? Mm -hmm. So the headliner for this year's event is Abby Wambach and most people know her as a professional soccer player. She uh, was on the Women's World Cup team yes. and she's also just been very active politically as well pushing for equal pay for women um, and she is going to be talking we don't know exactly what they're going to be talking about but most likely her uh, presentation or her talk is going to be about harnessing the power the, harnessing your power as a leader and really understanding the strength of your team. And she's written two books recently, right? She has. Well, I know of at least one. She, yes, she does have, you're right, she does have two. Um, but the one that she is really pushing lately is um, Wolfpack. And it's really interesting to hear her talk about it. She takes the script of Little Red Riding Hood and, and that narrative and flips it on its head and basically says, you know, you thought you were this little girl with a cape on your head and you're looking down and you have to follow this path that's been laid out before you but really we're all the wolves <laughs> and, <laughs> I can't wait yeah. to hear this mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so great. yes yeah. well thank you for sharing that I can't wait to hear about more of some of the inspiring women that are going to be part of this simulcast event uh, conference but we'll take a short commercial break and we'll be back shortly Fourteen years ago, he diagnosed her with cystic fibrosis. Our doctors read charts and test results. Knowing my family history, she screened me early for colon cancer. They read medical journals and digital images. But the most important thing they read... He put down the laptop, he looked me in the eye, and listened. Are their patients. Meritus Medical Group. Home to your extraordinary doctor. If you're like me, you probably can't wait to hear Jenna tell us more about the amazing women who will be speaking at this year's LeaderCast Women's Conference. Jenna, um, I want you to tell me about the women, but first I was going to ask, what is the mm -hmm. overall mission of LeaderCast Women? That's a really good question and a very important question. So LeaderCast Women is actually an offshoot of LeaderCast Live, which is a teleconference that's been around for a long time. Right. Um, LeaderCast Women is really giving women the microphone. It's giving women an opportunity to be on stage, share their stories to a community of other women, and that's very much needed. Um, and overall, the mission of LeaderCast is to develop leaders worth following. And, um, you know, we tend to associate leadership with a title or a certain pay grade um, or the number of employees that you have reporting to you. But really, you can be an unpaid intern and a phenomenal leader, or Good you point. can be the CEO of a global corporation and be a terrible leader. And we've all seen that in our lives with people right. that we know. Um, so LeaderCast really gives you the tools and the confidence to be an authentic leader, um, no matter what your, your title, your age, your pay, your race, your, your gender, any of it. That's great. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. I'm so glad that you said that. So um, some of the women that are coming on the show, uh, on the conference, uh, Randy Zuckerberg, uh, Bonnie St. John, Tiffany Dofu, uh, Stephanie Mata mm -hmm. and Rada Agraha. Agraha. Yeah, that's a hard name. Yes. To say. So <laughs> let's start with her. Sure. What can you tell us about her? So Rada, she's really interesting, and she has a lot of energy. She is the CEO and founder of a morning dance movement community mm -hmm. called Daybreaker. Um, so that's exciting. And it's international, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is around the world. Um, and people just get out and dance early in the morning and get their day started that way. Um, and she's also the author of a book called Belong, and it's about finding community and building community. And I think that's really important as leaders to understand um, the importance of belonging and how to create community within a workplace. 
Yeah, and um, Bonnie St. John has a really interesting story. She mm -hmm. is the first uh, U.S. woman to win a gold medal in the Paralympics, is that right? Yes, she's actually not just the first woman, but the first African American ever to oh. medal in the, a Winter Olympic competition. Um, and she all of that despite having her leg amputated at the age of five. Wow. Um, she's also a Harvard graduate and a Rhodes Scholar, um, won a lot of sales awards at IBM. Um, so she's she's, she, tied, she's done it all. Yes. That, that's great. I can't <laughs> yes. wait to hear from her. And who is Randy Zuckerberg? So Randy Zuckerberg, she is an Emmy-nominated tech media personality and investor, and she really um, is working to develop women in tech. Um, she through whether that's um, investing in women or um, education, making sure that girls are educated in tech just as much as boys, um, and corporate practices and pop culture as well, bringing that tech and women piece together. And um, now I still want to hear about Tiffany Dufo. Is that how you say her um, name? Dufu? <laughs> Dufu? Dufu? I'm not entirely okay. sure. I've been trying to figure that out, and okay. I can't. <laughs> um, she, she explains her life mission or her life's work as um, championing women and girls. And she has done that through developing um, so a peer mentoring or coaching company. Um, she's also... Um, led a national organization that is about developing women and girls. So really that is her number one mission in life is developing women and girls. Okay, that sounds good. And uh, the last one, but definitely not least, is Stephanie Mehta. Mm -hmm. She is the editor-in-chief of Fast Company Magazine, and she really, um, I believe, is going to talk about the next normal and having that mentality. You know, we, we're always talking about the new normal, but um, not just thinking about, okay, the current new normal, but what's the next normal and how to have a mindset that is um, primed for adaptability and change. Oh, that sounds good something that we could all benefit from at this time in our lives. Yes. So who should attend this event and why? Everybody. <laughs> okay, there you go. Everybody. Yeah, everybody should attend. Um, really, like I had mentioned earlier, leaders come in all forms and fashions. You can be um, a leader in your home. It does, it, you don't have to be a CEO. You, you're a leader in the home. You're a leader in your community, your place of work, your network of friends. We all play a leadership role in some form or fashion. Um, and so everybody should come. <laughs> and you, what you'll learn at the event is uh, there's something for everybody. There are some speakers who really are very motivational and they touch your soul and your heart. Um, and then there are other speakers who are very pragmatic and they talk about the science and the data and really get into the nitty gritty. So no matter which track you kind of follow, you will take away more than one nugget of wisdom um, and it, it lights a fire under you. It, it helps you pursue whatever it is in life that you've been kind of thinking about. And you know, another added benefit is not only getting to hear from these women, but to connect with the other women yes. who are participating virtually, right? There's going to be opportunities to connect mm -hmm. with them. So that's super uh, encouraging and exciting too. Uh, where can people get tickets and how much do mm -hmm. they cost? Let's get down to some of the details here. Sure. So the best place to get tickets is um, we have an Eventbrite page and that is lcw2020.eventbrite.com. And through the end of August, the early bird rate is $65, and then it goes up. Um, students get a rate of $60, and for your viewers. For prime time for women viewers, yes. hold on, okay. <laughs> we do have a $5 discount code, so when you go to get your ticket, you just type in prime when it asks for the promo code, and that will get you $5 off. So I'm going, I hope that you're going too, and I'm really excited because this year, uh, Prime Time for Women is getting to be a sponsor of this event mm -hmm. because we understand that this is how women together make the world stronger and better. Jenna, thank you so much for being here and sharing this information with us. Um, I did want to let you know that uh, this is a, a program coming up. It's important work. It provides lifelong learning opportunities for all. I don't know about you, but I hope that you're there. Prime Time for Women is also going to be giving away two complimentary tickets to this event. To enter to receive these tickets, go to our Facebook page and post a comment saying why you would like to attend this 
conference and what you hope to learn. I'll be there for sure. I hope to see you. Thanks for joining us for today's program. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, have a good time. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.